So thank you very much. Uh, 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 in fact, uh, this is one of the presentations that we are giving uh, different places in the world uh, related to how companies should collaborate in the future. Uh, and uh, the main focus of my presentation is this experience called Co Society. Well, very quickly, we are a very small company based in Barcelona since 2000, and we have helped companies to innovate. So our main business is uh, developing uh, and deploying, deploying ideas on how to innovate in companies. The result is a sort of a network of uh, 20,000 people that are innovators, entrepreneurs, etc. in Spain and South America, because most of our work is done in Spanish. Uh, but we are making a living out of helping companies to innovate. So innovation is our main focus. So that's why uh, you know that the world is uh, developing a lot of experiences on collaboration, especially in the sharing economy. But we had an idea which is uh, in a way slightly different, which is what if companies also collaborate? Because people collaborating is an easy thing. Maybe it's necessary. You need to collaborate in order to share what you have. But what about companies? So we started this uh, uh, project called Co Society two years ago, and the idea is helping companies combine their assets. So how to combine what they have in order to bring new products and services? Easy to say, difficult to do. We have we have learned several things that, as Albert said, could be applied to uh, any other organization based on sharing. Well, there is a lot of experiences. There are a lot of experiences around the world on collaboration. Some of them are very easy, like this one. You take an LG uh, telephone and you put the Prada brand and you have a combination. Pretty simple, just combining two brands. There are a lot of examples like this of co-branding around the world. This is more complex. Why two companies like uh, Renault and Daimler are collaborating in order to generate a new car? A car which is just in the middle between a Renault and uh, a Mercedes. So uh, uh, in this continuous spectrum of products, something just in the middle. Uh, this is different, this is new, this is coming. Uh, the automobile industry is providing a lot of examples on collaboration. This is even more complex. Uh, Coca-Cola developed several years ago a new manufacturing way to produce bottles based on sugar cane waste, so very ecological. Uh, they disrupted, in a way, the industry in the way they manufactured these bottles. Well, several months after that, companies like Hens came to Coca-Cola in order to share the manufacturing abilities uh, to produce these bottles. And the result is that something new, which is sort of a common, common, share, common, common uh, sharing uh, of uh, industry capabilities uh, around this, uh, this new way of manufacturing ecological products. Coca-Cola has done a lot of experiences like this. This one with Ili, uh, called Ilissimo. It's a new, uh, uh, it's a new soft drink based on coffee. And uh, if you see uh, the ad, it looks more like a Coca-Cola ad, like an Ili ad. And this is exactly because here the collaboration is based on marketing knowledge. How to market a product like this, that for a Coca-Cola is a very simple thing, but for uh, Ili, which is a, a, a coffee producer, is very difficult. So they share marketing knowledge. Coca-Cola, as I said, have done a lot of experiences, maybe, maybe one, of the most well-known experiences is this one. How you can create something out of combining a bottle of Coca-Cola and a chair. Uh, this, is, uh, this is pretty new, it's, it's like combining two DNAs, very different. I mean, it's uh, the manufacturing capabilities, the marketing, everything is different. Here you have Coca-Cola and Ineco. This is a manufacturer of chairs. This is the Navy uh, chair, is an icon, is a legend something that was developed during the Second World War, is made of aluminium. And the result of this combination, uh, it's a pretty amazing, is this, is the Coca-Cola Eneco chair, which is a chair made of 111 uh, bottles of Coca-Cola with exactly the same shape of the Navy uh, chair, but made of uh, plastic. So this collaboration, pretty new in the business, is just one example of hundreds of examples that we have mapped around the world of collaboration between companies in order to bring something new to the market. Okay. See another example and you will see how, how easy this is if you develop the syntaxes and how powerful it could be in the future of products and services. When you combine a product related to a sports like this one, in this case, sea sports, Adidas line for uh, surf, 
And uh, speakers like, or earphones like this one from Sennheiser, if you combine both things, just combining the two words, which is water earphones, what you get is a, no a new product, which is those earphones, especially developed for sport or water uh, uh, related sports. And uh, to me, this is exactly one photography of the future. The future is based on products that result from the combination of two knowledges. I know a lot about sports. I know a lot about speakers or, uh, or earphones. So I we together develop a new product that is providing value to the market. So there is a wave of these combinations across the world. It's an emerging phenomenon. The same, exactly the same as the sharing economy for people, for citizens, for the middle class. It's a phenomenon, and that's why you are here. There is an emerging phenomenon of companies combining their capabilities. That's why um, we have a, a lot of examples. If you just want 50 of those examples, if you go to our site for free, you can get this book, which are 50 examples of collaborations between two or more companies developing new products. Okay. So uh, what we learn is that most of these collaborations between companies are an accident. So two people meet, typically at an airport. They just happened that they uh, studied together in a, in, a, in, a, in a university. They got an MBA together, whatever. So they talk and they say, let's do something together. Just for fun, this means that next Monday, the teams of the two people get an email saying, let's do something together. So <laughs> it's your job to do that. But those accidents are typically uh, the reason why two companies collaborate. So our project is trying to demonstrate that we can, the idea, the main idea of the product is that we can create a system to make these combinations in a more systematic way. So that creating conditions where companies could meet, you could foster these uh, collaborations between companies. Okay, that's the cost society project. Well, these are, uh, uh, you see the dilemma, the motor systematic business intersections. And uh, in Spain, there are 40 companies. Those companies are large and medium companies. There is one rule of the game, which is no competitors can be in a society. So if there is one bank like this one, which is the second largest bank in Spain. The first bank could not be there. If you have HP, you, could, you will not have Epson. If you have uh, Repsol, you will not have uh, BP. So the idea is that companies that do not compete but that are willing to collaborate together, meeting every three months with methodologies, uh, as a trying of fostering, as I said, the collaboration between them. The project has al already started in other places. This is the case in Denmark. We have started in Denmark, and we are pretty close to starting the project in other places. Uh, we have conversations in Finland, in Norway, in Holland, uh, in Canada, uh, and we are presenting this in a lot of different places uh, uh, for, the last, uh, for the last months. Okay. What is the value for this? So what companies get? And this is the second most important learning that we have. Well, uh, the sort of the value chain of this project is like this. We help companies identify what they have that they can mobilize, so what assets they have. This is the key thing that I can share with you afterwards. We inspire them, so the idea is we look for examples well out of their business. If you are in the energy business, you can get interesting insights coming from retail. If you are in health, you can have interesting insights coming from, I don't know, the toy business. So that's a very important thing, getting insights from different sectors. We make them interact through methodologies, and we push them to do things together. And when I say push them, is that we push them. So it's like, it's sort of a blind date when we put companies together in a place, and we ask them to determine to see which assets they have that they can share. So identify, inspire, interact. In terms of interaction, what we have developed are several tools. Some of them are games, uh, plays, play, uh, car, car games, or other stuff like software to make companies realize the potential of their combinations. So what's the main learning that could be applied to you? Is that in order to combine two organizations, you have to skip the idea of the products they produce. So there is no way to make them get combination if they push their products to the other organization. So if I manufacture shoes, you will not get a conversation with another one that is not manufacturing shoes. If you get a conversation, it will be a conversation based on client, 
uh, client uh, customer, uh, sorry, sorry uh, supplier and uh, customer. If you want to have a conversation more open to combination, don't use the word product, don't use your products, don't use your portfolio, use your assets, what you can do. So part of this project is helping companies through these games develop a map of their assets, what they can do. Let me, uh, in some of these events, we also have design students that translate the conversation into mock-ups, into very simple ideas of uh, those uh, combinations coming up from, from the merge of their categories. One of the tools is called Copoker. It actually is like, a, as I said, a card a, a car game. Uh, another one is called Comaps. There are several tools that we use uh, in order to get to the ignition. Uh, let me show you several examples of ignition and uh, that uh, to, to just go to, to the closing remarks. Well, this is uh, one example of a combination. Here you have a supermarket or a chain of supermarkets, one million customers in a very specific geography in Spain, in Catalonia, and uh, the automobile club of that specific region. In this case, the business is very different, so they don't sell the same things at all, but they have something in common, which is uh, a loyalty card. Both of them have a loyalty card uh, that you can use in order to get discounts, and both com companies uh, share the same geography. So if you have a loyalty card in the same geography, you bet that most of your clients will be shared. So the idea here is why not combine the benefits of these two cards into a single card. Another interesting example is when we inspire those companies, we show them examples around the world of companies they should collaborate with. In this case, this automobile club uh, uh, discovered that there was a new concept of a, a car um, insurance in the US by Progressive, and that uh, we push them to collaborate in order to share what they knew on how to shift the way we provide uh, car insurance uh, to customers. Another very interesting example is this one. This is uh, the largest uh, oil station uh, network in Spain, more than 4,000 points of sale, and the second largest bank. And uh, believe it or not, the project here that we pushed was why not to have an automatic teller machine at oil stations. I mean, it seems, it looks ridiculous, but there were none. So the idea is that generally in Spain, that was the country where this project started, there is no automatic teller machine, there's no you know, bank on an oil station. So it made a lot of sense to develop a project together to do that. Another crazy example is this one. Uh, this company will be here, uh, Mar is, uh, is right here. So this is an example of a company that is uh, in the sharing economy, allowing people to share their cars, so to rent uh, cars between people. So in one instance, this HP company knew about their business model and they told, they told them to share some insights on how to share an asset, in this case a car, to do the same with a large printer. So why not a, a small medium company share a printer uh, that is very expensive exactly using the same methodology, the same idea than uh, sharing a car. And another one, Grosskilde Festival is the largest uh, festival in uh, the north of Europe, 100,000 people in a place for a week. And there we develop a project with a, a, an online company on the banking system to develop a new way to pay during this festival. So the main learning is that companies are willing to collaborate and do things together, but don't try to mix their products. Just understand that they have things to do together in terms of assets. Just um, so the main learning is that discovering your assets uh, and trying to put them together is critical. We use a very simple tool like this, which is a map of assets, and we have done this description of assets for more than 500 cases. And now we have a very interesting database and we start playing with them uh, in order to bring companies together and develop new things. So what's the final why? The final why, uh, this is the map of our value, value proposal. Companies, smart teams together to explore common products, to do it at the international level and develop new, uh, new, uh, new value. And the final reason is that the world is too complex to do things alone. So in companies, things should be done together. But this is based on trust, and the trust it develops from generosity. So this is difficult at the company level, but we try. And uh, our main focus is to do this 
uh, in several countries in the world, so every single city in the world should have their cost society event. So thank you very much, and uh, I hope you all.